Hey, Divi Nation, thanks for stopping by our documentation section to learn all about Divi's role editor. So there are all kinds of reasons why you might want to limit or flat out deny access to the Divi Builder for different users. So let's say you're a designer and you have a client who loves to get in there and mess things up, let's be honest. Uh, you're gonna be able to set their permissions within the Divi role editor so that they can only edit the content that you want them to edit. And also, let's say you have just a lot of users or contributors and you just don't want them to have access to really critical pieces of content you can shut that down in the role editor. And there are a lot of things that you can do to manage permissions and give people just enough power to really help you out by managing the content that you don't wanna manage. So there's all types of things that you can do with this Divi role editor, and we're gonna get into all of them in this video. Check it out. In this video, I'll be giving a basic overview of the Divi role editor. The Divi role editor gives you control over what each different WordPress user role can do within the Divi builder. Uh, it's got a simple interface. Uh, you can easily enable and disable permission settings for each of the user roles, uh, giving you full control over what the client can see and what the client can use uh, inside the Divi Builder. Now, as you can see right now, I have the Divi role editor up. Uh, it can be found in your WordPress dashboard sidebar under Divi and under role editor. Once you click on that, It'll bring up this nice clean interface where uh, at the top here you have all the different types of user roles available and uh, once you click on that you'll see all the different uh, permission options here to further customize those uh, permissions for the user. Now uh, if you need to you know a little uh, refresh your course on what these roles are. Uh, basically, by default, the administrator has access to everything without limitations. Uh, the editor is some someone a step under the administrator. Uh, the this person has the access uh, ability to access all pages, posts, comments, categories, tags, links, um, but doesn't have the more higher level setting uh, access to themes, plugins, core files, things like that. The author, step down from an editor, uh, basically has access to their own posts, uh, but they do have the ability to uh, edit it, upload photos to that post, and even publish those posts. Uh, this is a little different from the uh, step down the contributor, which um, like the author, has the ability to uh, access their own posts but um, and edit it and upload photos, but they don't have the ability to publish like the author does. Um, and then uh, this other user uh, role here called Shop Manager. This is really specific to uh, the WooCommerce plugin uh, if you have that installed uh, and on this install here of WordPress. I do have Word, uh, WooCommerce installed, so you'll see this uh, shop manager role that can be customized within the Divi role editor. Uh, the shop manager is basically like an editor uh, with the more specific permission to manage the WooCommerce shop. So if you are adding a new user to your WordPress site, uh, you would do that through the, uh, in the, in the sidebar here under users add new. All right, so this is uh, the all the the different boxes I need to fill in to add a, a new user, like username, email, things like that. But uh, if I look at the bottom here, you'll see the option to add a role to that user. And you'll see that all of these options coincide with what can be managed and further customized within the Divi role editor. So if I give this person an editor role, once I add that new user, it will automatically inherit the permission settings that I set in the editor role permissions here. All right, let's go ahead and take a closer look at some of the permissions and options available to us in the Divi role editor. Uh, each one of the users uh, will have the same types of, of options available. Uh, we're looking right now at the editor. 
user role. And you can see at the top here, this top row, you have some high level permission uh, capabilities. The Divi library, you could choose to enable or disable their ability to access that. The, also, the ability to do split testing. Um, most of the time, maybe you, you have a client that won't be needing that, so you could disable that. Uh, page options also, that's that little uh, convenient box at the top right corner of your page. When you're editing it, um, it says Divi page settings. You could uh, disable that here. And then the portability the ability uh, is the ability to import and export layouts to your uh, website. You could enable or disable that for your user. And uh, just we're gonna we're gonna go in order, but I just wanted to just kind of skip ahead just to show you that, for instance, this is a high level um, Divi library ex accessibility option. Um, if you want to keep it enabled, but then uh, customize maybe uh, some subsets of that. Uh, if you go down to this, you have library settings here. Um, you could choose to disable this save to library option or disable only the add from library option. And um, so they, there's some kind of uh, sub items uh, underneath uh, this main uh, higher level permission setting here. Also for portability, you'll have uh, at the bottom here, you'll see some sub options here for portability. Uh, so if you don't want to disable it altogether, if you don't want to do that, you want to keep it enabled, but then disable some of the sub options here, like uh, Divi customizer, theme options, and so on. The ability to import and export these things. All right, so let's go on to our next section. Uh, the builder interface. This has to do with the actual Divi builder um, and what is uh, in the visual builder as well, what's visible to them, what they have access to them. Um, and so, for instance, I could choose to add or delete an item or enable that uh, permission there. Uh, if you want to not let your client um, add anything or delete anything, you, you'll disable that so they can't delete any item in the builder. Uh, same thing for editing. You could disable editing altogether, um, disable moving uh, an item. Um, you could actually get disable the ability to disable certain items in the builder, locking them as well, toggling, um, loading a layout using a visual builder. All these are builder interface options that you can give permissions or take away permission for your user. The library settings uh, we briefly mentioned before, but this is the ability to uh, allow your user to only have access to saving to the library. Uh, you could do that by disabling these items and only give them the ability to save it, for example. Or if you only want them uh, to add from the library, and not save. Maybe you don't want to clutter up your library with all of their saved um, templates or whatever. So you could just allow them to access your library that you already have. You could do that as well. Uh, also, global items. Um, so maybe you have a, a global footer uh, section that you have set, and you and you don't want them to be able to edit that. You could disable it here, so they can't edit global items. Uh, settings tabs. Uh, so within each of your sections or rows or modules, um, you can, when you access the settings, you'll see the, I'll just show you here. If you go to uh, a, a actual Divi builder and if you click on the settings, you'll notice that they have content design and advanced tabs here. If you wanted to, uh, you could disable one or all uh, or some of these so that the user can only access, for instance, the content. If you want that, if you disable these, they can only see the content in the uh, settings of your module or, or whatever they're editing. 
um, settings types. Uh, this is kind of like a level within each of the tabs. So uh, some of these elements under the content tab, uh, like the ability to add backgrounds um, and some of these configuration settings um, can be changed or customized here. Uh, I could disable the ability to add configurations. Um, I could disable uh, their ability to edit the layout, like for instance, make something left aligned, right aligned. Uh, if I don't want them moving that stuff around and I have it nice and clean and in its right place, I can disable that for them. A common thing you may want to do is just disable all of this and only give them the ability to edit content. So let's go on to our next section here, the module use section. This is, as you can see, all of my, or where all of my modules are listed here with the ability to enable or disable them uh, when the user views uh, or is building their website with the visual or Debbie Builder. So if I don't want my client, for example, uh, we don't have a shop or a WooCommerce setup or anything like that, it's a good idea to go ahead and disable that function altogether, this option, so that it doesn't even show up in the list of modules when you're adding modules to your page. Just a, a, a good way to kind of clean things up, getting rid of the things that you don't really need. Uh, maybe something else you could disable is the uh, portfolio, um, filterable and uh, maybe your regular uh, full width uh, portfolios uh, in your regular portfolio. Uh, this uh, would be a good option to disable if you don't even have any of your projects. Uh, you know, it takes a little bit more functionality to add those projects in there uh, to, to get a portfolio capability. Um, and let's say you haven't done any of that, your client doesn't really need it. So you, you might want to just get rid of those modules so that they can't have access or even see it to clean things up. Um, so all of these modules here, um, you know, have that capability of disabling or enabling. And the last section down here, the portability section is where you can further set your permissions for the user to be able to import and export uh, customizer settings from the theme customizer, um, import and export your theme options, and import and export the role editor, which is this right here, what, we're, what we've been talking about, and of course the Divi Builder layouts. Um, while I'm here though, let's take a look at where you can uh, import and export your role editor settings and that's at the portability icon right here at the top right um, if i wanted to click on that one and this would allow me to export this divi role editor settings here and once i export it i can use this this group of settings to import it to my next website so that i always have the same uh, roles set for my editor. So whenever I'm doing client handoff, for example, I can use these settings over and over again by utilizing the import export option there. All right, let's go ahead and make some changes to our editor role here and see what it looks like from the editor's perspective. Um, let's say I want to change the page options to disabled and I'm going to go ahead and save Divi roles here. And let's open up the browser where I am logged in as an editor. And you can an anticipate some things changing once I refresh this page. Uh, notice uh, I still have access to my Divi builder settings here, uh, which holds kind of some page specific settings. And also this box up here, Divi page settings, here. Both of those um, will go away once I refresh the page. I'm going to go ahead and refresh. And there you go. Those have now gone because I don't have access to them as a editor now. Let's go on. Uh, maybe um, 
let's go look at the builder interface and maybe I don't want uh, my editor role to be able to do anything uh, within the Divi builder, uh, but edit an item. So maybe uh, I don't want them to delete anything or move any of the items around or disable an item or lock it um, or toggle the builder or anything like that uh, or load a layout. Uh, maybe I still want them to use the visual builder, so I'll keep that. Uh, but, but everything else is kind of disabled. The only thing they will be able to do is edit. So let's save that role setting there. And let's open up our Divi role editor page. Now you can anticipate some of these things changing. So um, I won't see this little delete row icon anymore. Um, I won't be able to clone anything. So that will go away. Uh, I won't be able to move anything around like I can right now. Uh, none of that will be functioning. The only thing that should show up is this little uh, hamburger nav icon here where I can go in and change some of the settings. So let's refresh the page and see our changes. And there you go. It's a lot cleaner. I have a um, the ability to edit items. Uh, but not really any other, you know, options available. I can't move anything or drag. Um, can change column structures, uh, but other than that, I can't really access any of the other options. So a lot cleaner display for your user, for your editor role, especially for client handoff. This may simplify a lot of things for them. All right, let's go back. And let's move on to library settings. So um, let me just go back to my page here. Uh, you can see I have some library settings here. For instance, I have the ability to save to the library. Um, I I can uh, once I'm in a module, I can you know save and add to the library here. Um, but I can't really add anything. So probably be best if I go back and you know enable the feature to add and delete an item just so I can see some of those settings there I'm gonna save that role now my user has the ability to add and delete things using the visual builder and I'm going to refresh that let's see All right, so now I have the ability to add things. So if I go here, excuse me, wrong one. Uh, if I add a module, I can add from the library if I wanted to. I can also save this whole template to a library. Um, uh, let's go, and I can add uh, a section from a library there. But let's go ahead and change that. Now, all I want to do is be able to uh, for this example, uh, add from the library, but I don't want to be able to save it or edit global items. Uh, so if you have a client and you don't really want them filling up your library with more uh, layouts or sections or rows or anything like that, saving them to, to your library, uh, you can disable that. But you still have some some helpful items in your library where you want them to have access to. So this is... Um, a good option to have there so I'm gonna save that out and then I'm gonna open up my other browser here where I'm logged in as my editor role and let's go ahead and refresh the page you'll notice that I won't have this ability here to save to the library and I won't have uh, down here save to library that will be gone as well um, let's go ahead and refresh the page so yeah, uh, that has now disappeared. Um, if I go into edit a module, I don't even have that button anymore. It's just the green save and exit button. Uh, so you've, uh, you know, you've gotten rid of that capability to save any items to the library. Let's go back um, and let's enable 
this feature again, save it out as we continue. Um, let's see, settings tabs. This gives you the ability to enable or disable the certain tabs that you see when you're you know, editing your site or your page using the Divi Builder. Um, so if I pull up my other browser here and I go to edit an image module, you can see that I have content, design, and advanced, the standard tabs here. And those coincide with these settings in the Divi role editor. So I can choose to, if I wanted to only have my client access the uh, content settings and not really have any uh, capabilities of changing designs or advanced settings, which makes sense considering you have all your design elements in place and there's no really need to change those settings. Um, so just leaving the content uh, enabled is a good you know, a uh, way to protect yourself against unwanted changes to your site. So if I save that, go back to my role editor here, update it. And now when I go back to my module, uh, I only have access to the content tab and the design and advanced tabs have disappeared. All right, let's look at the next row of options here, which are my settings types. Um, let's take a look here. We can choose to allow or not allow them to edit colors, edit content, fonts, buttons, layout. Uh, the layout would be things like uh, the alignment of an item, whether it's left aligned, right aligned, stuff like that. Also configuration, uh, we can choose to disable that. Uh, configuration, uh, uh, for example, if you have a blog module, a uh, configuration item would be how many categories or, or, excuse me, which categories to show or how many blog posts to display at a time. Those would be certain configuration settings that you could uh, disable. Um, for now, let's go ahead and disable our configuration, edit disable editing layout and disable editing the button styles and let's just keep the ability to edit content um, and colors and mm, let's keep fonts for now and let's save that out and let's open up a different page uh, from our editors perspective here and I'm gonna refresh the page so I can save those changes we just made. And I'm going to look at a blurb module. Now, if I go to my design settings, um, what you don't see here is the ability to, you know, align my items. That would be uh, my layout or at the ability to edit the layout. I don't have that option anymore. All I really have is the ability to change the color here, the text color from light to dark. I can change colors and I can change the content and I can change the fonts if I wanted to. So let's go back here and maybe that's too much. Uh, and maybe I just want to give them the ability to edit content. Uh, but not necessarily change the fonts. That's too much of a stylistic item. Uh, let's go ahead and disable that feature, save it. And when I go back, you can see that when I open up the blurb module, go to my design tab, none of my fonts can be now customized. Just the content and the color of the font here. All right, so let's continue on. Our next row of options would be the ability to enable or disable the different modules that the, the user could use. If I wanted to, I could disable the, uh, well, a good option would be if I don't have a WooCommerce uh, plugin installed and I don't plan on having any 
uh, shop on my shop on my site excuse me I could disable that module if I don't have any projects uh, installed or loaded onto my site I could disable the portfolio because you really need those projects to access the portfolio anyway um, I can disable all my portfolio modules um, so that my client wouldn't ever need to see it uh, and so that would clean it up for them also a good idea maybe would be to disable their ability to add code to the site with a, with a module um, all right let's save that out if I go to my other browser window here as an editor if I go to ed, uh, insert a blog excuse me a um, a module I don't have the shop module here anymore nor do I have any of the portfolio modules here nor do I have the code modules here so it's kind of cleaned it up for me here and I mean you may just want to allow them to only use uh, a couple of modules uh, and not confuse them with all this other stuff all right let's go back and the last uh, row of options here are our further subset of portability uh, this allows the cust uh, the client to import and export the settings from the theme customizer uh, from the theme options uh, from the role editor and from the builder layouts so uh, going back to this uh, role editor right here uh, this is our role editor and you have the capability to import and export using the portability icon up here at the top right and that's your overview of the Divi role editor